guys, so we're back to talk about gut health today. Are you excited? Super excited. Oh my gosh, 21 pages of bacteria. So um, the reason we did this test is Rakan has done a lot of Accutane, which is a very potent antibiotic. And antibiotics for my acne rosacea too. Right. And I took those almost nonstop for like over four years. So that's a lot of antibiotics. Um, in addition, he has some gut issues, such as bloating excessively right. after eating, just a lot of things that led us to think, some chronic overall inflammation. Inflammation doesn't usually just come, inflammation has a source. Right. For most people, it is their gut. So what happens is we get some gut dysbiosis, meaning that we're just not processing foods correctly, and then um, then you're getting like food kind of crossing your membranes where it shouldn't be and that leads to system-wide inflammation. So we fix that, we fix inflammation, you feel good, your joints move, you're happy. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is really interesting to me. Rakan has one of the most interesting microbiomes I've ever seen. Of course, of course. <laughs> I'm always special. <laughs> it's very special. <laughs> So the first page is kind of an overview of all the things that we're going to talk about. So your gut microbiome index, which is a compilation of these four indexes, is at 25. We want to get you up to 32. Okay. And what's driving that mainly is your alpha diversity. So um, to make a short science lesson is we have to have short chain fatty acids for our microbes in our gut to eat. Okay. So without them, they don't have a lot of things to eat, and then our mucus layer, that's in the inside where our microbiome actually lives starts breaking down. When that breaks down, then that creates a permeable barrier and that's when you get the actual food going out through your gut wall into your bloodstream causing that inflammation. So these keystone species have been found and this is a pretty new science. It's like within like the last 10 years, this what? has become really prevalent where people are like, oh my gosh, we, we need to know more about these guys in here. So as humans, we have more bacterial cells than we do human cells. We cannot digest food without bacterial Correct. cells. Like we are incapable of doing so. So um, alpha diversity, so as you can see, you're way down here in the red. Oh. So this means, and this is just a direct result of all those antibiotics. And so what um, we see here, of the 12, you have three left. Oh. So, yeah, and you've just completely wiped out eight, and one has a little tiny bit left. Oh it's just God. hanging on. <laughs> oh, and we can fix that, right? We can fix it. Good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, and this is the benefit of doing one of these tests is because if you just go to the grocery store or the health food store and you just get probiotics, you don't know if you're getting what you need. And so very commonly, a lot of probiotics that are sold are um, uh, acidophilus, like a lactoacidophilus which is fantastic. However, as we get further in the test, we're gonna see that you make plenty of lactate. You don't need that one. So if you took that, fantastic, but it's not going to add, it's not gonna make what we need you to make. Right. We've gotta do the specific probiotics, the specific bacteria, and then also the specific food that those bacteria eat. So that's what we're gonna find out today. So this is the biggest reason that your number is low. Okay. You're just missing a gob of those. And then beta diversity, this is how far away you are from the average healthy gut person. Okay. And so you're not terrible there. You know, you're trending towards, you know, not being great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if this kept going on, then you would definitely have problems later on in life okay. with, you know, gosh, I don't know what, I can't project, and yeah, it's not okay. going to happen because we're gonna fix it. Um, AMR richness is the next, and this is your resistome. So this is how resilient your gut is okay. to an injury. So antibiotics, food poisonings, things like that. And here you're doing really well. We want this over eight years at 7.62. Okay. And here's the really good news. So pathogens. Pathogens are all kinds of bacteria that get into our gut that do things that we really wish they wouldn't. Some common ones that people are aware of is like E. coli, um, C. diff is a big one that people get in hospitals and they need even more antibiotics, things like that. And I will show you all the pathogens that we looked for when we did this test. So there's quite a lot. Okay. And we are looking for even little animals. We're looking for funguses. We look for viruses. Um, we look for yeast overgrowth, all kinds of different things. And you don't have any of those Yay. things. Yeah. So it's good. It's like a barren desert in there. <laughs> in a good way? <laughs> in a way that we can go in and see. It's like this gorgeous earth and we're just going to put some some compost on the top of it. I like that analogy. Start seeding. <laughs>
we want you to have over 200 discrete bacteria and you have 97. Okay. So we're gonna be throwing some more families of bacteria in there for sure. Then we get to some ratios because at the head of our families, I'm sure everybody remembers high school biology, yes. right? Of course, yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm just gonna say yes. <laughs> <laughs> so phylums are the head of the bacterial families. And so we're gonna be looking at the phylums and how they relate because it's not enough to just say, we, we need this bacteria. We need this bacteria in relation to another bacteria. Having a ton of one thing is not necessarily good. It's like only taking, you know, or eating one food group and never eating anything else. We need everything in balance with each other. So here we have firmicutes and bacteriotides. And so firmicutes are a family that um, what their role has been through the time of us being people is to really kind of fatten us up. So fat people survive. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in times of stress, we get more of these firmicutes. They really respond to stress environments. They grow more and they tell you, time to eat. We need to get chunky because you're gonna survive that famine even though we probably are not gonna have a famine anytime soon. Right. <laughs> so this is a very common picture in the American gut in that we have way more firmicutes because we live very stressful lives. And your gut is no different. So you can see your ratio is way out of whack. We're gonna to want to bring these bacteriodites. Now bacteriodites, what their role is, is um, really they do a lot of inflammation reduction, your, your immune system resides there. So we want to increase these guys, reduce your firmicutes, okay. which again, we're gonna do through selective probiotics. Okay. Okay, then we've got your proteobacteria, acinobacteria. Um, and this is really interesting, one, one of the really interesting <laughs> things you have. So proteobacterias are where those gram-negative um, pathogens live. Other things live there too, but you have none of those. So what this is doing to you, one good thing is you don't have any of those pathogens, okay. but one not so great thing is the acid base balance in your gut is off okay. because of this. You don't have enough acid producing bacteria. So again, we're gonna fix that. But your acinobacteria level is beautiful. And now acinobacteria make GABA, they make a whole lot of neurotransmitters that we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Okay. Um, then, this is the really unusual thing. <laughs> so, Prevotellas. Most Americans do not have Prevotellas. Generally, the only people we see have these are Amish people, people that grew up on farms, that sort of thing, that ate food right out of the ground and pretty healthy food. And so we put that in ratio to your bacteriotides. And again, you, you know, over here, healthy gut, so fairly a good amount of bacteriotides, a small amount of Prevotellas. You have none of those in relation to your Prevotellas because you have so many Prevotellas. <laughs> so I'm not really sure how that happened. I'm very <laughs> interested it's like oh my gosh but Prevotel is a big thing that they do is control BMI okay. so that's one of the reasons you have a lot of different bacteria as you're gonna see that we go along that we're working to make you be chunky but these Prevotel are like a nope not gonna get chunky so that's why you're, that you're not 400 pounds <laughs> well that's a good thing <laughs> And then we've talked about your pathogens and the fact that you don't have any, so that's lovely. We talked about your keystone species and how well we're gonna do. So now let's talk about specific forms of digestion. So we have two different ways of digesting. So we have plant material and we have protein in the forms of animals. So sacrolytic is plants, proteolytic is proteins. So when we eat plants, we get some lactate, we get the short chain fatty acids we were talking about, we get some gas and we get a good pH balance. When we eat meat, we get the same gas and short chain fatty acids, but we also get a lot of metabolites because we're breaking down muscle tissue in right. our gut and that has to go to your liver and cleanse it and so that can put a lot of workload on your body so we prefer to get the majority of our diet plant-based right. that's just a healthy diet as long as you're getting your full complex proteins in it um, so when we look down here this is a really really interesting thing which I've never seen before really? so your yeah. sacrolytic fermentation when you digest those guys you are digesting they are crazily digested by the time they get through. And I do want to talk about this a little bit, digestion. Okay. So we have mechanical digestion. So you eat food, you chew it up, 
pops down into your stomach, and then we have mechanical digestion. Your tummy is grinding it up, acid is getting in there, different things are happening. And then as well as the fermentation, which is happening further along down in your small intestines. So when you eat food, then it gets into your small intestine in kind of a ball, and then the gallbladder puts bile into it. There's a whole lot of digestive things that happen. And then all the way, so primarily it's this, this isn't happening, this fermentation, not in your stomach. It's actually happening in your small intestines. So as the food is going along, it's fermenting or rotting, I guess we could say, and these bacteria are going to work doing that. And then that's where we're getting all the byproducts of our food. So the calcium, magnesium, the proteins, all of that is how that happens. Okay. okay. When you break down your plant material, it is getting fully broken down but you're not making short chain fatty acids from that. Okay. And so part of the reason is because you're missing those keystone species. So it's breaking down into its base components. So you're getting the minerals, the vitamins out of it, but you're not making short chain fatty acids. Interesting. It's really interesting. It's really unusual. Huh. Usually if we see really good sacrolytic fermentation, we're gonna see really good right. short chain fatty acids. Yeah. But we don't in this case, but that's okay, because we can fix it. Okay. Probably, and is that due kind of to the an antibiotics? Yes. Okay. Yeah, making it a desert in there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so butyrate production. So butyrate is the most important of short chain fatty acids. And some of the things that it does, it enhances intestinal barrier function. So this is a fancy way of saying that it stops leaky gut, which okay. as we go along, you're gonna see more and more, and I'll just spoiler, he has leaky gut. <laughs> so. <laughs> so can you like, Okay, for, for like the average Joe, what, what is exactly a leaky gut? So inside of our intestines, there's two layers of mucus. There's one layer that your microbiome lives in, and so it's bacteria rich, and then a sterile layer inside of that. And then further inside of that are these goblet cells that kind of link together like this. So we should not have bacteria in our sterile level of, of membrane. Okay. But when you have leaky gut, the bacteria have permeated into that. Now you have two layers that are bacteria dense. Okay. And then what happens is because they are breached, those short chain, um, the, or sorry, the um, goblet cells start dying off and opening up and then your gut wall becomes permeable and it's just like a break in a fence. Whatever can come through okay. it comes through it and that's actually getting out into your body. So, um, and that's what causes inflammation. Okay. So that's what's happening here. And that's just because we don't have enough of these short chain fatty acids. Okay. Um, so this one also scavenges ammonia. Ammonia is a, is a byproduct of eating, um, regulates the immune system, reduces oxidative stress, and it also, re uh, it needs an acidic environment in the gut. So one of the reasons you don't have a lot of butyrate is because you don't have enough acid in your gut. Okay. So we talked about that, that he doesn't yeah. have enough of those proteobacteria that make acid. And we're gonna see a little bit later what has happened instead. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> then we get propidate production. So this is another short chain fatty acid. You have none of this at all. Just zip. <laughs> So what this one does is it supports a healthy immune system by encouraging regulatory T cell to come and take care of things. So 70% of your immune system is in your gut. Uh -huh. So this is one of the big reasons that Rakan has terrible, terrible allergies oh, is because a lot of his <laughs> immune system is really compromised by not having a good tight gut as well as not having the short chain fatty acids that send out the message to round things up and get rid of them. Okay. So that's just missing. Okay. Um, it also makes, uh, it's responsible for helping your liver make new glucose to get out to your cells. So it's also responsible for energy production. Okay. And remember at the beginning, we talked quite a lot about your energy yes. and you know, you've had vitamin D, you've had low dose naltrexone, that's testosterone, all those things are helping. Yes. But this is really the start of it all. Wow. We want you to have good glucose production because mm -hmm. that's what our bodies run on. Right. Um, and then this just really supports a healthy inflammatory response. So without it, you're going to have inflammation. Mm -hmm. um, next, we have acetate. Again, not making any <laughs> acetate either. Poor Rakan. <laughs> so 
This one is used to make cholesterol and also to create new fats, which are actually important. Cholesterol surrounds all of your organs. It is the base of all hormones. We really need that. When you're not creating enough cholesterol for your body's use, you start running into problems. So we definitely want some more of that. Also, your muscle tissues can use this to repair and regrow themselves. Okay. And as I said earlier, you are doing really good on lactate production. So, and this is super common. Most Americans do make a lot of lactate. If there's anything you eat that has um, a probiotic, it's enriched in a probiotic, anything like that, it almost always will be a lactate because they are very shelf stable and they're very easy to put into food. Okay. So, and they're also super common, like, you know, in yogurt, like that's generally what's in there. So a lot of people have this, you know, which is not a bad thing. It's a really good thing as well. It, um, it does a whole lot with your immune system and inflammation as well. However, it can't work alone in this case. Ooh. It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's holding it all up. <laughs> Then we get to protein fermentation. And here what we're seeing is that your body's really struggling when you eat protein. Hmm. So it's not able to break it down effectively. And so protein is going through you in a much more whole form than what we want it okay. to. And this is a direct telling us you have leaky gut right okay. here. Um, when you have a lot of what the proteolytic fermentation, when it's this far off, it produces a bunch of amines is what they're called. So polyamines, and they are directly responsible for inflammation and gut dysbiosis. And they have beautiful, lovely names, um, putrescine, spermidine, and cadaverine. So, oh my God. yeah, you know you want those roaming around in your body, right? So, and you can see their levels are just off the chart. Okay. These ones are actually toxic to your um, gut cells mm -hmm. and to that intestinal wall. Okay. So they're part of the reason that you're, you're broken down and that things can get through your gut wall. So we're gonna get rid of those guys. Um, phenols, these are a byproduct of meat metabolism and those you actually don't have, which is super great because these are absolutely toxic to gut cells. They can be implicated in things like ulcers, like actually making holes, physical holes oh. in your gut. So super glad you don't have any of those. You also are not producing any ammonia. So, and this is great. Part of the reason for this is that you don't drink. Okay. So your liver is really good at detoxifying. It's not being, you know, it doesn't have a heavy load to detoxify okay. already. So it's able to get rid of the ammonia that does come out of your food and just get rid of it. Okay. Um, hydrogen sulfide. This is where we see that your acid levels are impaired. Okay. So normal hydrochloric acid is a pH of two. Do you remember the pH scale from high school? Well, yeah, I, I kind of <laughs> do. I kind of do, yes. Okay. <laughs> well, for those of you who don't, the pH scale goes from zero to 14. Zero to seven is acidic, seven to 14 in the middle there is not, it's just neutral. But seven to 14 we'll see as alkaline. Anything at either end of the scale will burn you. It kind of doesn't matter to us, but we need a good balance in there. And hydrochloric acid is a pH of two. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very acidic. Stomach right. acid can digest pennies. It can do all kinds of things. Super okay. acidic. So, but when you don't have enough of that, your body has a backup system and it's hydrogen sulfide. Okay. So when we see hydrogen sulfide levels this high, we know that your acid base balance is impaired. Okay. So hydrogen sulfide's pH is five. And um, pH is like the Richter scale. So it's not just three points, it's it's exponential. Okay, okay. It's huge. So when you are trying to digest meat, you simply don't have enough acid to do so. Oh. So it's going through you in a much more whole way. You're not getting the benefits from it. Mm. And it's also contributing to the leaky gut. Okay. Then we get to methane production, which you are doing great at. People that have high levels of methane have what's called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO. Many people are familiar with that. And what that means is the methane is slowing it everything down. These people are really prone to IBS, especially constipation. Oh, okay. So you don't have that. Your body is processing it correctly. Yay! Yay. Okay, then we get to neurotransmitters. So about 90% of the serotonin in your body, which is a neurotransmitter that's super important to us, is made in our gut. Most of our neurotransmitters are made in our gut. So when you have gut dysbiosis, you're not going to be making neurotransmitters to the level you should. And GABA is a really important one. What GABA does is it opposes dopamine. So dopamine is an excitable kind of neurotransmitter. Like when you're going to go do something okay. or you need to perform, you have a lot of dopamine. <laughs> but when you need to relax, 
Knocks, that's where GABA comes in. Knocks it off of those receptors and you can relax, you can read a book, you can be calm, you can go to sleep. When you don't make any GABA, which is the case here, then what happens is you have a lot of anxiety, you worry a lot, you're stressed because you can't get that relaxation that you need. Interesting, yeah. Yes. I do worry a lot. I it's, know. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> I know, it's really super neat. Um, and so all these things, we're going to do things while we're fixing the gut with the probiotics and the food. I'm going to give you some supplements to take in the meantime okay. because we don't want you just struggling along for three months while we do this work. We want you feeling good now. Okay. okay. Glutathione. You're also not making glutathione. Um, glutathione is the most powerful antioxidant in the body. Ooh. It is responsible for all the mitochondria, which the more mitochondria you have, the more energy you have, the better you feel. So super important. It's the primary agent of the liver being able to detoxify things. Um, it also acts as a hormone regulating the release of dopamine and GABA. Okay. So again, you see that interplay yeah. of hormones. Yeah. yeah, and so when one is off, they're all off. Yep. Yeah, so we can fix that. We can do IVs with glutathione. There's a whole lot of different things we can do to fix those detox pathways. Then we get to histamine production. And this is a really interesting to me. Given the amount of allergies you have, it's telling me that your histamine production system is actually not impaired. So the, when you are eating, the food that's produced or the histamines that are produced by the foods are not causing your allergy problems. So yeah. that's really coming from your immune system, which we saw is really impaired. Right. So it's kind of interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah. Indole production, another thing you're not very making much of, <laughs> or any. <laughs> oh my goodness. So what this one does, it is another neurotransmitter that tells you to rest. So people are most familiar with you eat turkey, you have a lot of tryptophan, right. you get really sleepy. That is a huge influx of indole. So every day, that's what it does. Okay. It helps you sleep, it helps you rest. So when you're not making it, you're not going to have really good sleep. Okay. You're going to have more broken sleep and just not really feel very rested. I do. Yes. I really do. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to fix that. And then we get to sex hormones. Estrogen is also recycled in the gut. So everybody, men and women, need a certain amount of estrogen. So it's really important for inner ear balance. It is responsible for bile production in the gallbladder. There's a lot of things that estrogen does. So we don't want to get rid of it in men, obviously. But we do want it to be recycled appropriately. Otherwise, men become estrogen dominant. Okay. Well, women too. But it's more of a problem for men. So you are recycling your estrogen just perfectly along. So. Awesome. Good job. Thank you. Good job, guys. <laughs> then we get to your vitamins. Most vitamins are also made in the gut with the exception of vitamin D, which is the sunshine vitamin, of course. Right. Not here. But <laughs> <laughs> it's the vitamin we take in a bottle. Yep, yep, yeah. yep, yep. <laughs> So overall, you're doing okay making your vitamins. And now I do want to say that this does not translate to serum level. Because if you're taking, let's just say, a B1 vitamin, your serum level is going to be excellent. Well, this is telling us, do you have the bacteria that create this? Okay. That's what we're looking at here. So for B1, you are creating a ton of that. You're doing great. B2, not making any of that. You're kind of like, you're either making a lot or you're making nothing. Yeah, it's kind of... <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> B5, you're good. B6 and B7, not making any of those. And let's talk about these a little bit. Sorry, I kind of glossed over them. B2 um, is needed for energy production and fat metabolism. And it also plays a big role in the immune cells. Okay. Then we get to B6. Um, B6 supports immune system, brain function, and protein metabolism. And B7, which is biotin, is important for growth, development, and cellular energy production. For healthy hair, skin, and nails, which everybody knows. But the other thing, healthy immune response. Okay. So we're seeing that over and over right. again. That right. Yeah, your immune system, just the poor thing, is struggling. Mm -hmm. We get to B9, not making very much of that. B9 is really vital for making healthy blood cells. Okay. People are familiar with folate deficiency. That is a B9 deficiency. B12, also not making that. Again, healthy red blood cells, um, brain and nervous system functions. So not having enough B12 causes a lot of neurological problems. Can that be fixed as well? Yeah, everything okay. can be fixed. Oh, awesome. Once we know about it, we can fix okay. anything. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs>
and K2. You're doing really well in K2, and so that's excellent. Um, this one does a lot of work with the oxidative damage that we occur. So K2 is, is the vitamin that really gets rid of that damage. Are you tired of bacteria yet? Well, I mean, it was, it was actually very interesting. I mean, and it's like everything works. If something doesn't work, it kind of has other, uh, yeah, well, what's the word I'm Like a backup to? system? Yes, well, and that, and, but like, because this doesn't work, then you're not, this is not working, and oh, so, you know, yes, yeah. Yeah, it's like a downstream effect. Right, right. All the time, yeah, yeah. and like, oh. everything in our body is like, we do have a certain amount of backup systems, but when you run out of those, right. it's like, then you don't. All right, so we're back to graphs again, and we're back to those phylums that we were talking about at the beginning, and so this is a healthy gut, this is your gut over here, and you can see, as we talked about, your firmicutes and bacteriodites need to switch places, and your proteobacteria is completely completely missing off of your graph. Okay. Um, the phylums again over here, we're looking to get everything into the green. Your one is pretty close, but everybody else needs to move around. Okay. So if we were to do this test when we're all done, we would expect to see all of these guys oh, straight awesome. down in the green. Yeah. Now these are bacterial families that are commonly found in the gut and when they're in the green they're doing wonderful things. Okay. When they get out of the green they start doing things that we really wish they wouldn't do. Oh. You have everything in the green. Yay! <laughs> then this page is kind of the fingerprint of your gut. So neither good nor bad, simply what it is. So there's going to be differences in all of us from how we were raised, what we ate, our antibiotic use, where we live now, all kinds of things. So this is commonly found, and this is you over here. So you can see you've got quite a lot of different ones. And look at your Prevotellas. They made it to the top of the chart. <laughs> They're not even in a normal oh healthy gut at all. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> so just really, really interesting. Um, when we get done, we would expect that your fingerprint would be a little bit closer to over here, but it's always going to remain some of its individual characteristics right. just because you're an individual person. And the last page of bacteria. <laughs> okay, so here we've got another three bacteria that are super commonly found in the gut, but you have them at very high levels. So 82% above normal, 94 and 98% above normal. Okay. And so what these guys do, the first one is a Choreobacteriaceae. Say that three times <laughs> No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And this one, what it does, um, it reduces insulin sensitivity, it's increased with stress, and it helps create that beer gut look, which you don't have. <laughs> Probably because you've got so many Prevotellas. <laughs> Okay, and then we've got um, a member of the Firmicute family. Again, we saw that those were overrunning. So in the Firmicute family, and it's called the Selena Monodenisiae, that's what it is, for sure. Um, and this is a gram-negative bacteria that's related to inflammation in the gum line. And it can also cause tooth rot. I have gum disease. Oh my gosh, now we know why. Yep. Those are those bacteria. We're gonna eradicate those. Oh my God. Guys. Yes. And then we have a lactobacilli, that's also in the Firmicute family, and this is causing the bloating that you experience okay. after you eat. So, um, and just some other things. It's responsible for glucose, all related sugar digestion. They overbreed, they commonly lead to a higher BMI, just not in your case. So that's it for the report. Any questions right now? Oh, no, I mean, this was, this was very interesting. I'm like, it, okay, I keep saying I'm excited, but this was really exciting to know, I mean, how my gut works. It's really, really cool. It is really cool. Microbiology is so cool. And <laughs> yeah. just like the interplay of bacteria with our human physiology and how everything works. I mean, we have bacteria everywhere on our skin, everywhere doing all kinds of things for us. And we're just mainly unaware of them. Right, right. But in our gut, we really have started, like I said, really started to pay attention because it really matters. We have to get our gut microbiome the way it should be in order to really get the full benefits of our food. So that's why these tests are so important. This is our plan. Okay. So fortunately for you, you didn't have any pathogens. Okay. Pathogen protocol lasts between six and nine months. Okay. It takes a while. Once those guys get in there, they're hard to get out. Okay. Um, but you don't have to do that. Cool. <laughs> I'm so glad. So this is a three month program. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna start every day with a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in four ounces of water. Okay. So what that does is reduce 
reduce your acid level to where we want it to be. It's gonna set your stomach up for proper digestion first thing in the morning. And I really, this is a great thing for most people to do. There's very few conditions that don't benefit from apple cider vinegar. Okay. Um, most people would do really well with this. Um, additionally, I always want you to do some mind-body work. So meditating, Tai Chi, yoga, anything like that. I mean, it's so good for you for a million reasons. Oh, I absolutely agree, yeah. But your microbiome especially likes it. So we saw those firmicutes, they climb up during stress, they help keep you heavy, that's their job. So reducing your stress level reduces your firmicutes. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to give you some supplements as well. So emotional wellness, that is going to replace your GABA while we're doing this work. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you a methylated B vitamin complex, and that's going to replace all those B vitamins that we're not making right now. I'm going to give you a biocidin toothpaste. It's going to get rid of that gum disease okay. for you. And then I'm going to give you butyrate. That is the only short chain fatty acid that we can actually take. Okay. So I'm going to give you some of that guy. And then we're going to have a total gut restoration kit, and that comes from Microbiome, which is the company we use for testing. Okay. And it has all of the different um, bacteria that we need to reseed in. Okay. So every month you take one, then you add on another, and then another. And by the end of the three months, your mucus is restored, your microbiome is restored. Wow. I know it's really amazing I I, stuff. I, yeah, it's, you know what's weird? I keep, like you, you would think it's gone. No, you can't get it back. But you know, human body can repair itself. I just keep forgetting. But, Absolutely. You know, it's a, it's a, it, it could do that. Yeah, we just need to help it a little right. bit. And so I'm going to give you a few other things. So this is a list of all the food that you need to eat. Okay. These are the bacteria that you're missing. These were your 12 keystone species. Uh, okay. So everywhere there's a yellow. This is the food that they eat. So while we're replacing those probiotics or the, the microbiome, if you don't eat the food, it's kind of like buying a hamster but you don't feed it right. right well that's not helpful it's just gonna die again or if you don't take the probiotic but you eat the food it's like throwing food in the corner but you don't have a hamster okay so we need both of these things to come together so every day you need to eat something from these groups that are yellow highlighted which okay. is pretty much every group <laughs> but it's not as overwhelming as it looks no, at first it's yeah not. i mean you can i mean I, I mean, the, the cool thing is like I love everything in, in, in each group. Everything, well, that is yeah. wonderful. Yeah. And you'll see over and over again, there's certain foods. There's um, kale is over and over again. Lentils over and over again. Okay. So, you know, you can, lentils will hit five different groups. So you can eat lentils. I love lentils. Fantastic. I love lentils. I know, I do yeah. too. They're so delicious. So, so you will be eating these. And these are really foods for your lifetime. These are the foods that your gut really wants to okay. eat. Okay. Then the very last piece of this is right here. And this is from the Environmental Working Group. And it is the Dirty 12 Clean 15 list. So every year this group puts out this list. These are foods that are so heavily pesticided that they cannot be cleaned. It's inside of them. Oh. And pesticides, especially like a glycophosphate, is so really toxic to your gut. Okay. You do really want to avoid pesticides if you can. So these foods you're going to want to buy organic. Okay, okay, okay I see what you're saying. Okay. And then these ones over here either are not pesticided or um, that we don't eat the part that is. Like say uh, with watermelons, we're not generally eating the rinds. Okay. So that's okay to buy these organic because I'm not trying to make everybody go broke. For right. sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you can just take but, this. But those definitely you would like. I mean, yeah, you would want to buy those organic. Interesting. Yeah. So you can just fold that up, put it in your wallet. Then okay. when you're shopping, you know exactly which ones oh, to buy Oh, absolutely. Organic. Yes. I like that. And then what we'll do is we'll meet every month and we're going to talk about how are you doing okay. and, and some helpful tips and just get you going along your way. And I would expect even after the first month that you're going to feel so much better, less bloating, oh my God. better I, digestion. I mean, I'm, honestly, I already feel great. I mean, with the LDN. Yes. I, and it's, it's actually done wonders. Because it's reducing that inflammation. Yes. So it is really the bridge between where you were and fixing your gut health. Okay. Once we yeah. fix your gut health, then, yes. you, we don't have that source of inflammation right. all the time because I really don't like to keep people on medications. Really, you know, when we're done here, vitamin D. That's why I want you taking vitamin oh, D. Oh, yeah. 
you know that's it and other than that good food water sleep exercise speaking of exercise too in your i forgot to tell you this so this is our plan but then in here is a lot of the things that i said to you because i know that you have an excellent memory but <laughs> You may not remember what I said about page seven. So if you head over here, you're going to be like, oh, that's what she said. So I definitely encourage you, read this report, because I did not read it word for word, of okay. course. Okay. And then here's some more things that absolutely pertain to you specifically. Like, this is why this is happening okay. to you. Oh. Um, additionally, wherever I've highlighted over and over again, this is all the exercise that you need to do. Your microbiome likes moderate exercise. Most people's microbiome likes moderate exercise. I do have some people that it'll say yoga, low impact, other people high impact, but those are very rare. Most people's microbiome likes moderate exercise, but you can see how important all the yellow areas, how important exercise is You're right. to your microbiome. Right. So, yep. Exercise, yeah. Um, the blue is all stress reduction. Okay. So also very important. And the green is limiting high fat, high sugar foods. So those your gut does not like, not happy, doesn't want those things. They cause a lot of inflammation. So I think that that is everything we have to talk about today. Any last comments? Well, I mean, this is awesome. I, I, this is really cool. I, I, I was not expecting this de amount of detail, but that's, that's really cool. So after I get on this plan, mm -hmm. do we, when, when do we do the, do, do we do the test again to check? We definitely can do the test. So um, I really kind of leave that up to people. This test is expensive. I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. Okay. So it's right at $500 and that's the test to the lab. It is DNA testing of your gut. It's gonna be expensive. So a lot of people don't really wanna pay that again. And I feel like if you are having daily normal bowel movements, you're not bloating, you're digesting your food, we can pretty much tell that we've done the work. Okay. So but since we're doing this to show people the benefit of all this, we are gonna do a second test when you get to the end of your total gut restoration okay. program. Okay. We're gonna do another test and show, look at the differences side by side so we can see what you've done. And I have homework to do because then you can tell if I didn't do it from I the know. test. I'll be like, you did not eat your kohlrabi. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm under, I'm, I'm under, under pressure right now. <laughs> but, but, but it's a good thing, though, because this needs, I mean, like we said, I am getting older. I'm, you know, almost 50. And we, we don't think about, I, I never thought about any of this, any mm -hmm. of it. We just eat food to eat. Right. Because I'm hungry. That's all, you know. Yeah, you're not thinking. It is actual fuel. Yes. Food is fuel. And we need to pick the right fuel the, yes. for our vehicle. That's, that's really important. But right. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. You are so welcome. I am so excited to work with you on this progress and to share all the results with you. Thank you so much for helping me. Thank you so much for being a wonderful person. Ha, ha, ha.